so, the question was um, account based marketing does it mean prospecting going after new accounts or is it about upsells and cross sell with existing customer and for me in Kultura it's both I have targets for both um, you have separate I have separate, separate targets. same as the business have separate targets for upsell cross sales and, and new business so yes I'm doing specific activities with existing customer to increase adoption uh, to make them use more, to sell to additional departments, and I'm doing campaigns to sell to uh, prospects. So the question was, where do we spend what, most of the money, on existing customers or, or on uh, prospects? So Kultura is, is, is a growing company. Um, most of our business, luckily, comes from uh, prospects. But basically, we align our efforts with, with the business targets. I mean, if 70% of our growth is supposed to come from, from new logos, this is where we invest most of our efforts. It's all about it's all about creating this alignment. Uh, just on that question, I think f whatever your goal is, you try to see if ABM uh, can help. So, if you have enough customers to start looking at cross sell, right? Then you start saying, wait, but I'm not trying to cross sell to everyone. Like Marketo has a lot of customers. Some of them won't buy a lot more than just the core product. So, looking at them in terms of cross sell doesn't make sense. So you try to use the lens of ABM. Okay, of all the customers we have, which are a few thousand customers, which ones are relevant to cross-sell? Which products? What's their story? What, what identifies them as being relevant for cross-sell? Pick a few hundred customers, maybe a few dozen customers, not all of them, and just focus on them. And you do the same if you have new business. Now, I see companies, some, I meet a lot of customers in the U.S. mainly that do ABM. Depending on their whatever their strategic goal is, some of them are really going after new business because that's their key initiative. Some of them are going only on cross-sell because that's what makes sense for them and new business is working fine, whatever, or it's not a, a focus area for them. You one example. This morning we launched a Switch to Cultura campaign targeting specific existing accounts that are using a competitor for one of their solutions. So we are tailoring the campaign uh, to compete against the solution, the technology that they're using, telling them why is it better for them to switch to us. Yeah, I, would just, I would just add on that, and, and I think this is uh, summarizing what both Mike and Dana said. ABM is not the panacea for all the marketing problems, and it does not fit to every business strategy. Uh, if your goal is to generate new logos and, and, uh, and new customers, focus on demand generation, it's not necessarily account-based marketing. But for example, and in Panab, we're doing something, something similar with a replacement program for one of our major competitors. So yes, this is account-based because we know exactly what's the profile, we know who we target, we know their characteristics. So the marketing tactic is different. It's more account-oriented. So it's, you know, it, don't put all your marketing budget on ABM, it's not the right thing to do. Yes, there are questions here. The audience. So the question was, how do we map the specific people within the account? I made my homework. Uh, so Ta -da -da -da. I have a shake. So <laughs> uh, uh, um, the way we do it, uh, at least in Panaya, and um, um, I don't know if this is like a scientific methodology, but there are four elements that we, that we look at in this account selection process. The first one is potential business and revenue. So how, how much revenue can we generate from this account? If, if it's a small account, if it's a, a niche player, we'll, we will not, it, will not be, it will not be part of the list. The second one is company demographics. Is the company working in the right vertical, in the right country? Uh, do we have decision-maker relationship with it, within this company? So that's the second aspect, it's the company demographics. The third one is technological fit. So in the case of Panaya, at least in the previous, uh, let's say for the traditional product, if you were not a user of SAP or Oracle, you are not part of our target audience, so it's technological fit. And the third one, the, the last one, sorry, the fourth one is past engagement. Did we have any business with them in the past? It can be a customer from four years ago that did not renew. Uh, so maybe that's, there's another opportunity here four years later. So these are the four selection criteria um, from our side. Basically, deciding who do you want to sell to is, is the first step in, in, in your go-to-market strategy. The people within the account. So the question was, 
how do you uh, identify uh, the decision makers and influence with, with, within the account? In most of the instances that I've seen, uh, marketing doesn't have that good of a grasp on that, and sales do. Because that's what sales do typically after marketing says, okay, we have some, you know, a, a few good leads there. And like Kfir mentioned, that's kind of typical mark, uh, sales MO. So the base method, the methodology, apart from what you might already know, is go to talk to your salespeople and ask them, if I open the door, and, and they typically know those accounts that they sell to and how they're built, and they will tell you, okay, you got to get uh, the IT guy, you got to get the security guy. You got to get, uh, obviously, the, the, you know, the main decision maker. Let's say you're selling to HR, so the VP of HR. Uh, within that, you typically have a director of recruiting, and you got to get this person too, and maybe you know someone from finance. So the best methodology that I've seen so far, because it's very different with any organization. So after you chose that target account list, or one of them, like Rafi mentioned, um, you talk to salespeople and ask them how do these organizations typically work? Who is part of the decision committee in these organizations typically? And then you have the people. And then you even know in your ABM programs that an account score cannot be too high until you kind of check the boxes for all of these decision makers. If you were not able to engage with anyone from IT in that organization, it means that you haven't really made that much progress. So the question was, do you differentiate campaigns per role? Uh, one of the things about account-based marketing is that it makes it worth going through that effort. You're targeting accounts that you know that if you win them, you'll get a million dollar deal, or they will change if you're a small startup, you know, that logo will get you the next VC round, right? So it's worth putting time into. So yes, you won't necessarily target Mike, but you will have campaigns targeting IT people in those types of accounts and finance people, but only in those types of accounts and whatever the other roles are. The, some companies do ABM and really just target 30 accounts. And then they do a lot of work on these accounts. They you write a thesis on each account. Most companies that I've seen have a few groups that in total are a few hundred accounts. You can argue that if you're getting into the thousands, eh, maybe it's not exactly ABM, it's more like a vertical approach, right? It's the large financial organizations. So you can argue maybe that's the border, that's not really account-based marketing anymore. Uh, when we were that small startup in Saitera, uh, after a while we figured out that we will focus only on Marketo customers and demand-based prospects. Demand-based was our key competitor. We figured out that we have a hard time educating people why they need web personalization, which is what we developed. Uh, we didn't have the time to start explaining why you need to personalize your website. So we decided to go after people who are in process with demand-based because demand-based already explained it to you. And I just need to come and say, hey, I have a product like that one, just better because you already know why. And then we did it across the board. We spent less money on ads because we only uh, ran ads targeting demand-based keywords, and that's, that was not that many, only 3,000 3, searches a month. But every one of them is a potential deal. Um, and we went after Marketo customers because for us, 4,000 customers was infinity. It was like more than we would ever handle. And it helped us uh, have all of our all of our two salespeople and our marketing collateral and our website speak just one language, which was the Marketo customer language. So whatever words and terms Marketo used, we just did that. And my salespeople had just one pitch because they knew that if I'm bringing someone to them, it's someone that has Marketo. So for instance, instead of saying, we're in Saitera and we do web personalization and then typically the customer would say, oh, but I have Marketo and I think it does something similar, which it didn't, but they thought that. We said, hi, we're a Marketo partner, which we were, that does this and that. And that immediately changed the conversation. And they just had one script and when I thought about, it's unbelievable how much time you save 
when you do this properly because when you develop a web page for your website or a landing page or webinar you're just thinking about those accounts so the question you asked was uh, how do you do uh, account scoring because HubSpot doesn't have it yeah automatic so yeah oops yeah so Marketo is plug. the first yeah Here's Marketo is the <laughs> Marketo is the first marketing automation platform that added the account object and Marketo has account scoring as part of the product uh, if you have the ABM uh, add-on, I expect that others, yeah. There, there's, I expect a special others discount, yeah. there's a special discount for yeah. B2B talks attendees, by the way. But that's, yeah, so uh, <laughs> at least one has it. Um, and I expect that uh, companies like Eloqua and Pardot that are more focused on the, on the larger accounts uh, will, uh, I'm sure they're developing it right now. Mm -hmm.